Hello, Calc kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. And today I'm a little bit excited about this lesson because it's our first lesson for the BC kids, meaning it's our very first topic that is not on the AB exam. So if you're one of the AB students, you don't have to watch this unless, of course, you just want to see how to do some cool BC stuff. So BC kids, here we go. Integration by parts. I like to think of integration by parts as similar to the product rule with derivatives, if you remember that. But it's a it's got some weird things with the setups. If you notice here, we have the integral of some function f and then g prime. So it's not f times g, but it's f times g prime. That's kind of weird. So what is that going to equal? It's going to equal this weird thing, f and times g minus the integral of f prime g. <laughs> Well, this is weird. What in the world is this coming from? So get that written down and let me just show you really quickly. We can derive this from the product rule. If you remember the product rule, and that goes all the way back to lesson uh, 2.8. That's what this was. If you think back to lesson 2.8, that's where this is coming from. We take the derivative of a product of two functions, f times g, and that's going to give us f prime g plus f g prime. Now, a lot of textbooks will use u and v instead of f and g. So just like this, a lot of times textbooks might say, or, or even your teachers, so just, it's the same thing, but they might use u and then v prime, and then here it would be u v, and then here it would be minus the integral of u prime v. It's exactly the same thing. The only reason I don't like using u and v is because they can look the same thing. Like sometimes students are lazy and what if they go like this? Is that a u or is that a v? Like it's just kind of hard to tell. So if I use f and g, it's very obvious. I'm not gonna make a mistake getting confused of what f and g are when I'm writing these things out. So I'm gonna take this product rule that we learned way back in 2.8, and I'm going to solve for this thing right here, fg prime. Now, why am I doing that? Because if you look at this, fg prime, that's what I'm trying to get by itself. So uh, let's subtract this over here, and I'm gonna have the integral of fg, and then prime, the quantity, and then minus this thing. So minus f prime g, and then that equals this fg prime. So now what do I do? I integrate both sides. I'm going to take the integral of this whole thing. So when I take the integral, I'm going to get, I'll try and write small because I, I have this line and then one more line. The integral of, I'm just going to write this whole thing out real fast. Okay, you have this thing. So I broke it down by each term and I have the integral of each of those. So now this gives me my final answer. If you look, this is now just the integral of the derivative of this. Well, that's just fg minus this I don't know. So it's f prime g equals the integral of f g prime. So that gets us back to where we started. The integral of f g prime is equal to f g minus the integral of f prime g. That's what this is. Okay, so this might be really confusing right now. You're going to see in the problems that we're, well, I'm gonna give you a couple of problems. It's really not too bad. You just have to recognize a few things to make this work properly. And I'm gonna help you with that. The tricky part of this is just identifying what is your f and what is your g prime? It does not mean it just goes in order f g prime. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You have to be careful about it and look and see what would make most sense. And here's the strategies to think about. If, you want, if you're choosing one for f, you wanna choose something that becomes simpler when you take the derivative. So for example, when I look at this x and this sine x, which one gets simpler with its derivative? The derivative of x is one, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Cosine x is not simpler than sine x, so that's not a good choice for f. x is a good choice for f, so let's just call it x. And then when you take, you choose your g prime, you want something that can easily be integrated. Well, there's only one other thing left here, and that's sine x, so let's just write this down here. And then you think, all right, so sine, whoops, so sine x, what is the derivative, or excuse me, the integral of that? The antiderivative is just negative cosine x. Okay, that integral is simple enough, finding that antiderivative. And then what was the derivative of this? So if I have f here, then f prime would be 1. And then I'll also include a dx. So it's technically it's d just 1 times dx. So again, back up here, g prime. Oh, I should have included this. Let's do that. Let's include the dx so that I have this sine x dx. So that was my g prime. And then it's antiderivative going back to g is negative cosine x. So now we plug it in to our little formula and figure out what we've got. So let's write this down. I don't have it on the screen, but I'm just gonna write it down. And this might be a good idea for you on a lot of these problems. Write it down because it might help you out. 
with uh, just memorizing this. So it becomes fg, so the integral of fg prime is fg minus the integral of f prime g. Notice that I have the g in both of them, so it's just g, not g prime, and then I have the f in the first one that doesn't have the integral, and then with the integral it's the f prime. So let's write down our answer now. We get uh, f times g, so f is x times, what's my g? My g is negative cosine x, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the negative in front, and then my cosine x minus, and then I go to my integral of f prime g. What's my f prime? 1 dx. So I can just say 1 I want, but I'm not going to put the dx. I'm going to put the dx at the end here. So 1 times, and then I do g again. So negative cosine x. So negative cosine x. And then don't forget I had my dx here from where my f prime was. Okay, now let's, uh, let's see, can we clean this up just a little bit? Yes, negative x cosine x, and then this becomes plus, I'm gonna take this negative and bring it to the front, the integral of just the cosine x with respect to x, and then we take the integral and I have our final answer. So the final answer is negative x cosine x, and then the integral of cosine x is a positive sine x plus, C. Boom. There's our answer. So there's our first example of integrating with uh, integration by parts. So as a reminder, you have to figure out what is f and then what is your g prime. And it is not always in order. It does not always go just f and then g prime like it did for this one. Now here's another example I'm going to show you. This is the last one I'm going to show you, but this one we could do with by integration by parts, just like I showed you. But the problem is that we're going to have a lot of parts. Sometimes on this step here, let me identify what I'm talking about. On this step right here, where you've taken, you separated it all, did your integration by parts, and then you have this integral right here. This integral is sometimes not a simple integral, and it might require integration by parts again, and then integration by parts again. So it's kind of like product rule and product rule and product rule. It's kind of like that. So when we're looking at that, if you have something that's going to take lots and lots of integration by parts steps, then this thing called tabular integration can speed it up for you. This is really a kind of a cool thing that just organizes it all and that it speeds it up. So what we're gonna do is identify our, uh, our f and our g prime. So we want something for f that when we take its derivative, it gets simpler. So x to the fourth is going to be our, et, our f because as you take its derivative, it gets simpler. So what we do with this x to the fourth is we're going to differentiate it until we get to zero. So what's the derivative of x to the fourth? That is 4x cubed. What is the derivative of that? 12x squared. What is the derivative of that? 24x, a derivative again. 24, the derivative again, zero. So we go all the way until we get to zero. Now, once we've done that, we now go over here to g prime. What is our g prime? The g prime is this thing, sine x. So that's the other piece. And now we want to integrate whatever we chose the same number of times that we differentiated this one. So we've got to take the, the uh, integral of sine x, which is going to give us negative cosine x. And then the integral of negative cosine x is negative sine x. The integral of negative sine x is a positive cosine x. Again, I'm just taking the antiderivative this time, and then it's the same number of times. Uh, antiderivative of that is sine x. And then the last one, we've gone in a full circle here. We're back to sine x. And uh, so then that one is negative cosine x. Okay, so now you have these things set up. It's kind of like a table format, which is why we call it tabular integration, tabular integration, however you say that. And now we do the weird part. I want you to draw a line from this first one down to the second line over here. So you're not drawing a line straight across. You're going to the one that's just below it. So you're gonna do that with each one of these. So just draw a line from there to there. Again, for this line, so you're not going straight across, just go to the one right below it, and then there, and the last one down to here. So we don't need to use this zero because there's not a term that it would be connected to with the one right below it. Then we have to do this thing called plus minus. So the first term is going to be positive. The next term is negative. The next term is positive. The next term is negative. The next term is positive. So it just goes plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, as many of these little arrows that you have. 
weird stuff going on. But this is actually the pattern. If we were to do this long ways of doing this uh, integration by parts, this would be the pattern that it would come up with. So this just saves us a lot of time in trying to come up with all of it. Now we can put our answer together. So our first term is going to be a positive x to the fourth times negative cosine x. So I'm going to have x to the fourth times negative cosine x, which just means I can put the negative in front. Now I do the next term. So I'm going to have a positive 4x cubed and then a negative and a negative sine x. So the negative negative makes this plus, and then I'll have my 4x cubed, and then what was it? The sine x. Now my next term, I'm now to the 12x squared, but let's figure out the sine. It's a positive, a positive, and a positive. So this little plus here, and then add the other signs together, multiply the other signs together, and I get a positive. And then 12x cubed attached with the cosine x. Oops, that's supposed to be squared right there. There, that's better. All right, next term, I have a 24x, a negative, and then a positive. So positive, negative, positive means this is minus. And then I have my 24x and then the sine x. And then my last term, I have a positive 24, the positive sign, and then a negative sign. So all combined, that's a negative. And then 24 and the cosine x. And then with the very end, plus my unknown constant c. Well, that's really long, but trust me, that is a lot faster than doing this integration by parts, step by step by step, where you have to integrate this part again with integration by parts. So it does speed it up when you have a lot of different steps to take. And you'll know that because this x to the fourth, this term that you choose as f, it would have to go all the way down to zero. Okay, that's the tabular integration. One little comment on this before we close the video, and that is that sometimes on an AP exam, they might actually have an intermediary step when it's a multiple choice problem, where somewhere along the way, they might stop and choose this. So you just have to kind of look at your answers on the multiple choice. Don't get carried away and go straight to this big long answer when you see on the multiple choice that none of the answers are like that. So if one of the answers has a plus integral and then blah 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 stuff then you know you don't have to do this whole thing and you might just go back here and do this process here and it's probably faster to find the correct answer okay that's everything so rock that mastery check and i will see you back in our next lesson